Welcome friends, we are discussing the subject of regulatory framework of business and the topic we are discussing today is an all important one that is foreign exchange management act. This is unit 6, basically what we are going to discuss in this program is the total layout of the act starting from its extent, applications, commencement, objectives, definitions and in the next part of the program then we are going to talk about various provisions. There are six provisions of this act namely provisions related to regulations and management of foreign exchange covered under six heads such as provisions as to transactions in foreign exchange, next provisions as to holding of foreign exchange security by residents, next as to current account transactions, provisions as to capital account transactions, provisions as to export of goods and services also provisions lastly as to realization and repatriation of foreign exchange and also like I have said we will talk about the different provisions of the act with regard to its administration or its management which is defined in terms of who is authorized person, appointment of adjudicating authorities, special director as well as the appellate tribunal, the organizational structure that is prevalent if one has to appeal against some of the orders. Coming back to the first aspect of this act FEMA, basically liberalization privatization and globalization policies of our government led to need for better foreign exchange management. We were having an act by the name of foreign exchange regulation act FERA which was enacted in 1973. This act was reviewed thoroughly and it was felt that it should be repealed and replaced with the new act namely FEMA Foreign Exchange Management Act which was passed by Lok Sabha on 2nd December 1999 and it got the assent of the President of India on 9th December 1999. It came into effect from the 1st June of the year 2000. So, we can say that the advent of new century led us to the new regulatory framework in the name of FEMA 2000. As far as its extent is concerned, it extends to the whole of India meaning thereby that every resident, every business organization, every establishment operating within India is covered by the gamut of this act. Apart from that it is also applicable to all branches, offices, agencies which are located outside India but owned or controlled by a person who is residing in India. So, because the FEMA act takes into account the foreign transactions that is why this is one such act which is applicable to those organizations which may not be located in India, but which are located abroad outside however, they are owned or controlled by the resident Indians that is why they have to come under the gamut of this act that is FEMA 2000. Objectives of the act are very clear that to consolidate and amend the law 
relating to foreign exchange with the objective of facilitating external trade and payments. As it was said that the LPG regime led to the globalization of Indian business and external trade increased many fold in order to facilitate this external trade in order to manage the flow of the currency foreign currency coming into India this act helps in consolidating and amending the existing legal structure relating to foreign exchange. Secondly it also helps in promoting the orderly development as well as maintenance of foreign exchange markets in India. So that there is some institutional framework which is available for trading in foreign exchange currency in India. Numerous occasions arise when suppose you are planning a trip to any foreign country then before leaving India you will be required to have some currency of that country which you are planning to visit. In that case you will have to convert the Indian rupee Indian currency that you are having in the form of the foreign currency of that country which you intend to visit. So then what kind of development and maintenance of foreign exchange market in India will take place is also governed by the provisions of this particular act. Now we shift our attention to various definitions stipulated in the act. First definition is the authorized person. Authorized person is that authorized dealer, money changer, person authorized under section 10 B to deal with foreign exchange. Reserve Bank of India has laid down certain terms and conditions which the person intending to set up this foreign exchange market should fulfill and then only that person will be authorized by Reserve Bank of India and he will be considered as the authorized person to deal in the foreign exchange. Second definition is related to capital account transactions all those transactions which alter the assets and liabilities outside India of persons residing in India or assets or liabilities in India of persons residing outside India. So this capital account transactions are very important from the point of view of if you are living in India and if you want to change or alter the ownership of assets or liabilities outside India then it is governed by capital account transactions. Vice versa if someone is NRI non-resident Indian residing outside our country but wants to alter his assets or liabilities in India then those transactions will also be covered under the scope of capital account transactions. Currency is defined as currency notes, postal notes, postal orders, money orders, checks, drafts, travelers checks very useful when you are traveling from one place to another, letter of credit an instrument which is used for the business transactions from one industrial organization if they want to purchase some product from another uh, institution then they will have to open the letter of uh, credit LC it is called then bill of exchange promissory notes these are also important uh, transaction documents for businesses and most interestingly credit cards or such other instruments as may be notified by RBI. So even the ATM cards that we are using debit cards and credit cards which are used for uh, creation of uh, financial money they are also coming under the definition of currency. As far as currency notes is concerned it is further classified or specified as 
the cash in the form of coins and bank notes. So, this will be the currency notes. Now, we come to the all important current account transactions. Essentially, they are defined as those transactions which are not covered in capital account transactions. So, transactions other than a capital account transactions will come under current account transactions. But what are these such as payments related to ordinary course of business, wherein some goods have been purchased and then the payment for those uh, kind of goods may have to be given or some services received. So, the payment for receiving those services has to be given. Similarly, payment due as interest on loans will come under this. Remittances for living expense for spouse, children, elderly parents also. Now, this can also be two ways that an NRI located outside India sending money back to India for taking care of his family members, his parents and that will be covered similarly vice versa if the money is sent from India to take care of the living expenses of dependent family members who might be living outside India. Now, those expenses which are incurred in connection with foreign travel, education and medical care and the payments of the medical care that is taken up sometimes abroad. So, then we see that nowadays there is a tendency that some of the students they wish to go abroad for receiving higher education. So, the fees that is remitted in the form of the uh, money that is given to the educational institution will come under this current account transaction. Similarly, if healthcare treatment is received that will also come here. Next definition is for export and to simplify goods which are taken out of India from India that means that those goods which are exported to any foreign country will come under this. Similarly, providing services out of India from India. Number of examples can be given. We have an organization called IRCON, Indian Railways Consultancy Organization. Now, this IRCON is giving consultancy services in many of the other countries and helping them in developing the network, the railway network. And so, the services IRCON is giving outside India will come under the export of services. Similarly, import is defined as the goods brought into India. It will also include the services that the Indian business organizations are receiving from the consultants located abroad and that will also be considered as import of services. As far as the foreign currency is concerned, it is defined as any currency other than Indian currency. Now, because we are designing this act FEMA for the context of India that that is why any currency other than Indian rupees will be defined as foreign currency. So, you might be noticing that this particular act FEMA is having great relevance and applicability when it comes to having international business exchange. Next definition is that of foreign exchange and it covers all the deposits, credits and balance payable in foreign exchange. It also includes drafts, traveler stakes, bills of exchange drawn in Indian currency, but payable in foreign currency. Similarly, draft, traveler stakes, bills of exchange payable Indian currency outside India. So, we have to consider these aspects that the foreign exchange covers deposits that is the credits and balance payable in foreign exchange. It also covers the drafts, traveler stakes, bills of exchange drawn in Indian, Indian currency, but payable in foreign currency. Similarly, draft, traveler stakes, bills of exchange 
payable in Indian currency outside India. Tenth aspect is related to security. Now, security means shares, stocks, bonds, and debatures, government securities, saving certificates, mutual fund. Now, we have seen that the business has globalized and now attempts are being made to acquire funds from all over the world and that way if any Indian resident wants to buy some funds in foreign companies then it will be considered as the security as far as the definition of this act goes. Similarly, any Indian company may issue their GDR that is global depository receipts and through GDRs they may wish to attract foreign investment. The Indian government will also have policies with regards to encouraging such foreign investment into Indian businesses. So, in the light of all these transactions, the importance of defining security in the act increases. Then we have foreign security exchange, that exchange where foreign shares, stocks, bonds and debentures, government securities, saving certificates, mutual funds can be traded will be covered under foreign security exchange. Next is Indian currency as we have said that the currency which is expressly drawn in Indian rupees will be covered under this heading of Indian currency. It will include both banknotes as well as coins. The discussions on foreign exchange play an important role in the sense that we have to keep on tracking that how Indian currency is faring with respect to different foreign currencies. Nowadays you are well aware that Indian currency has not been faring well especially when we compare it to US dollar and we have seen that it has reached all time low level. Similarly, definition is given as that of persons and these persons are also defined as individuals, HUF that is Hindu undivided families, companies, firms, association of persons, office, agency, branch. So, these will be considered as different entities which will be covered by this particular act. Similarly, the definition is given of persons residing in India. Person residing in India for more than 182 days, it does not include person who goes out of India or who comes to India for employment, business or with the intention to set up business. So, who is defined as person resident in India? The one who has been residing in India for more than 182 days. Also body corporate or persons, registered offices, branch, agencies, they will be considered as resident in India. As far as person resident outside India is concerned, it is simply defined as a person who is not resident in India. Repatriate to India. Now, repatriate means bringing foreign exchange to India by means of selling, holding, realized amount to an authorized person in India. So, if some foreign investor comes to India with the intention of bringing foreign exchange to India, he will be termed as repatriate to India. In the act, services are defined and the services which are defined are as follows that of banking, 
financing, insurance, that means that the whole of the banking sector is covered, transportation, processing will include food processing also, supply of electrical or other energy, it could be electrical energy, it could be now the non-conventional energy uh, sources such as solar, wind power, energy etcetera are also coming into work. So, they will also be covered, boarding or lodging or both meaning thereby hospitality industry is covered, house construction, entertainment, amusement. Nowadays, we are having so many of the amusement parks and so many other amusement avenues for the young ones are there or the purveying or new or other information meaning thereby some of the communication uh, industry will also be covered under the services. Now, we also talk about the transfer. Transfer is defined as how the foreign exchange will be transferred actually. It will be done through sale, also through purchases, exchange, mortgage, pledge, gift, then loan or any other form of transfer of rights. So, the transfer of rights, the transfer of title can take place through any of these means of transfer. So, what we have to understand that by giving these definitions in the act very clearly, it has been explained that the authorized persons who are the authorized persons, it has also been defined as to different kinds of currency which are there and we should also be uh, knowing as to what are the various transfer means which are available. Now, when we will shift our attention to various provisions, in all those six provisions we find that uh, these definitions, clear understanding of these definitions will be helpful in the discussions. When we are talking about the Act FEMA, we find that uh, Foreign Exchange Management Act was actually taken up as a replacement of the earlier Act of FERA, Foreign Exchange Regulation Act 1973 and the changing economic scenario in terms of the policies of government of liberalization, privatization and globalization led the policy makers to bring in the new act of foreign exchange management act, which was basically brought in with the objective of facilitating external trade and also for the maintaining the management of foreign exchange in the country. We have also been seeing in this particular program that different segments of the agencies associated with this act have been defined clearly and these definitions, their understanding will help all of us in better understanding of the act. The act also assumes greater significance in the viewpoint that most of the business organizations which are operating from India are as a means of getting up the economic ladder are trying to have external links with some of the foreign companies. And then this is also a good sign for our economy, wherein more external business, more overseas business brings in the much coveted, much desired foreign currency to our economy also. Thanking you.